All right, Sean Stepner here with Dan Connolly after the Orioles lose game one of the ALDS to the Texas Rangers, 3-2. to two. Lots to get to, Dan. We'll start with Kyle Bradish. Manager Brandon Hyde pulling him after four and two-thirds. A lot of Orioles fans out there hearing from them on social media, seeing, seeing comments. Myself kind of wondering, was that the right move? What say you? I didn't like it because you're talking about 84 pitches. You're talking about the first game of the playoffs, and you're talking about your ace. That said, this is kind of what the Orioles have done most of the year. And, and you know, they had a situation where they had lefties and a switch hitter coming up. Evan Carter has hit everything. And you had Danny Colom as a left-handed pitcher who's excellent against left-handed hitters, ready in the bullpen. So it's one of those things that, you know, you, you can question at a time. It didn't work out. So here we are because it's the playoffs, because we can scrutinize every single thing that, you know, we look at that and say he only had 84 pitches. And he is supposed to be the ace. I didn't like it, but I also understand the reasoning for it. And that's, like I said, that is something that Hyde and the Orioles have done much of the season, and they decided to do it this time, and it, it didn't work out as well as they would have liked. So it doesn't work out, obviously, on the scoreboard, and you use so many relievers, you tax the bullpen, and that sets up a big game, too, on Sunday, Grayson Rodriguez, the rookie. He better have his best stuff, because if he doesn't, it's going to be a long day for Baltimore. It's a lot of pressure on Rodriguez to perform in game two. And I think one of the things you have to look at in this game, too, with Bradish on the mound, is once you start that bullpen parade, then all of these guys got to hand off to each other. And when you have a chain like that, one of the links almost always goes awry. And, and it, was, it was Jacob Webb this time, and, you know, he gives up a home run, which ends up being the, the game winner. And if you have to do that again tomorrow with Grayson Rodriguez, then you're in a situation where you're putting another parade link there, and, and one of them could snap. And so Rodriguez has to pitch deep. He has to pitch deep into the game, and he has to, you know, do what he's done since he's been up the second time. And, and I think he can do that. And, I, you know, I think it could, could happen. But, again, it started it in game one, and now there's more pressure on game two, regardless who your starter is. Absolutely, and there's, there's pressure on the hitters as well. It took a while for them to get going. Um, they fully didn't get you know, the hits that they wanted, but they got on base. However, they weren't able to push them across the plate. Uh, the seventh, eighth, and ninth wasted opportunities for this ball club. Um, you know, late in games, that's when the O's tend to shine. They didn't in game one. Yeah, I mean, they only had five hits, but they were also 0 for 4 with runners in scoring position. And even though they got a lot of walks, you got to get those guys in. Seventh inning, they had a four-pitch walk to start it. Eighth inning, they had a four-pitch walk to start it. Ninth inning, Henderson leads off with a single, and then he gets thrown out at second base. You have to convert those, and the Orioles are usually pretty good at converting those. But, you know, you're not going to win when you get five hits and two runs against a team that scores like the Rangers. And the Orioles pitching overall did pretty well, but you're not going to win like that. You have to have that big hit. Gunnar Henderson, ninth inning. Leadoff man on. He attempts the steal. Brandon Hyde called it a miscommunication. Uh, you spoke with Gunner in the clubhouse. Uh, what did he say? And um, you, you just can't have that in, in, in the postseason in these ball games, can you? Well, you know, Brandon Hyde called it a miscommunication. Didn't go any further than that. So we, I asked uh, Henderson afterwards, you know, what does the communication mean? He goes, I don't know. I thought the sign was on. And so he thought he was getting the sign to steal. Maybe this sign was not put on. Ninth inning, runner on first base, no outs. You got to wonder if that sign was put on. But he believes it did. Brandon says miscommunication. The problem is, Sean, is in these series, in the playoffs, those mistakes, even if they're small mistakes, are magnified. You can't make mistakes in the playoffs because you lose. I mean, you know, mistakes have a way of catching you in the playoffs. And unfortunately, there's several things we can look at, whether it was the pitching decision, whether it was mistakes, whether it was not converting with runners, you know, in scoring position or man on first with no outs in, in those seventh and eighth and ninth innings. But those tiny mistakes, they add up in the postseason. And now that sets up a critical game, too. Uh, it is by definition, not a must win, but it's almost a must win because you can't go to Texas in a best of five down 0-2, losing both games here at Oriole Park at Camden Yards. This team has shown the ability to bounce back after losing the first game of the series all regular season, but this is different. This is the postseason. This is the playoffs. Austin Hayes saying it in the clubhouse to me. You know, uh, they, they've shown it all year. They're used to these situations. They just have to treat it as such, but it sets up a, 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 an absolutely massive game two 
here on Sunday. It does, yeah, and they are home, extremely so. resilient. And so you expect them to come back. I don't think they're going to be, you know, they're, they're going to pack it in after one loss, right? But the, the concern is now they're facing Jordan Montgomery. And, you know, a left-hander who can really pitch, who's done exceptionally well since he's, he's joined the Rangers. And, you know, the Orioles probably had the better pitching matchup for this game because they had their ace versus maybe a 3-4 cobble together is what, the, what Texas did. Now they have, uh, they have to go against Montgomery. And after Montgomery, they have Nate Evaldi, who's 8-2 with a 3-something ERA against them a lifetime. So those are two pretty big challenges. And, you know, the Orioles, I think, will be fine for it. I think they're going to be ready for it. But it does put them in a hole 0-1.